What is up YouTube? I am back again with another video and today I have a very special review for you guys so because I didn't make a four year anniversary of me being on YouTube that's right it's been four years as of March 6th or 7th um, so basically I just completely forgot to make one and I had one set up but I didn't really like it and I recently came across this um, and this is something I've been hunting for about five years um, well, since about 2014, so five, six years, and, uh, I finally have one on the in the collection. The last one that came up on eBay was about five years ago, sold for 1500 This one I paid a thousand for, just over a thousand after tax and shipping, and without further ado, here it is. So this is the U.S. Marine Corps Experimental Flak Jacket that's made out of nylon ERDL camo pattern. It featured a plate in the front, a utility pocket in the front. It says do not drop. Um, shooters cords on both sides to help rest your uh, the, the butt of the gun on your shoulder. Um, it had webbing on both sides of the uh, chest for ammo pouches or compass first aid pouches, whatever. And on the bottom, it featured a built-in cartridge belt um, designed to hold, again, uh, slide keeper pouches. And it had three, or a total of six, uh, yeah, six eyelets, um, three on this side and three on this side for your M1910 hanger gear. Flip it on the back. We can see that it has elastic, um, uh, four uh, eyelets, or a total of eight, or a total of 16 for the whole vest. Um, on the vest itself, just like the M69 flag jacket, and the webbing belt goes around to the back side too. And then on the back, many people believe that this was for a plate, however, it actually was not. It was a built-in field pack. So you'd actually carry field essential or mission essential items. This would uh, come in as a, a butt pack. It featured three drain holes on the bottom with a Velcro closure. So it can expand very, very big. And to wear the vest, you'd have to undo one of these. You just kind of pull on it and it has Velcro. And this would help you um, put it on, but it was also acted as a emergency quick release. So this vest will come apart into two pieces. The front piece featured five drain holes at the bottom, and the bottom piece also featured five. Unfortunately, there is no booklet, so it says, Read your instruction booklet. This armor may save your life. One, this armor vest is designed to protect you against grenade and shell fragments. Front component has an armor plate to protect you against AK-47 projectiles. Utility pockets and hanger webs are provided for carrying individual equipment. Number two, put vest on overhead with body shoulder secured or with either shoulder open. Make sure you have the correct size secure open shoulder with snap fasteners number three secure both sides of the vest by overlapping the front over the back and engaging the slide closure panels with the touch and close fasteners side closure panels should be evenly adjusted to provide snug fit against your body at all times number four for emergency removal, open slide side closure panels and pull shoulder tabs open. Or shoulder pull shoulder opening tabs. Five. Keep snaps and touch and close fasteners free from dirt. Six. Do not remove front plate or drop the armor or throw it around and risk armor plates damage. Wear your protective vest at all times in combat. Size medium regular. It does not have a federal stock number because this is experimental. And it says body armor fragmentation, small arms, protective vest with front plate, 
Marine Corps Type 1 Experimental. And you can see who made it and the supplier's name. So basically these were only experimented with in 1971. They only made them in 1971. Nobody knows how many they made for sure. And um, out of all the, the pictures of these things on the internet, by matching up like each splotch of camo, uh, this vest is the most recent surfaced one. Um, and with all the, the pictures out there, I based it off of pictures versus hearsay. I know you could say that uh, pictures worth a thousand words, and it is, but if another collector posts pictures of this and you could see that these camo splotches matched up, then you know that that's the same vest and not a different vest. So, that being said, based off of pictures, I am the fifth known person to own one of these vests. This is by far the rarest item in my collection. Um, yeah. Let me say that again. I am the fifth known person to own one of these vests. Um, basically, it's the beginning of modern body armor as we see it. It's very similar to, uh, like, the OTV or Interceptor vest. Um, but this is actually the Marine Corps' response to the variable body armor. So this vest here... So, um, the Marines saw this vest and thought that they should design their own like it. And they only designed a front plate. Um, I guess they thought, we're not going to get shot and running away. So, they only designed the front plate. Um, now, of the five of these that have surfaced in modern times, um, three of them have their plates, but no pictures of the individual plates have ever been posted. Um, unfortunately, mine does not have the plate, so out of the five, three have the plate and then two do not. Uh, mine's one of the two that do not. The inside is like a olive drab grain, darker grain than like the Pazgat, but that same kind of nylon. Uh, same for the outside, it's that almost that same kind of nylon for the Pazgat. Um, these never made it into Vietnam. They never made it past their experimental trials. Um, but uh, yeah, guys, I am super excited to finally own one of these things. Um, basically, I saw it. Well, uh, a buddy of mine sent me the sent me a, a picture of it, and um, I had seen it once, but I didn't really check it out at the time I wasn't planning on bidding on it and then I, I thought more about it I'm like well you know here's my sh shot and because the last time the last one five or six years ago sold on eBay for 1500 um, give or take I knew I was gonna have to spend probably about a thousand and the whole auction was quiet up until like the last five minutes of it and uh, I knew it would reach that about that much and the guy below me, my, my maximum bid was actually met um, $1,001.99 is what my max bid was, and it was met. He got outbid by one penny, and I only won by one penny, but that was my absolute top is what I was willing to spend on this thing. Super glad to finally own one. You know, I have people telling me, oh, you know, Nick, one year, this item... You know, this pouch or this vest deserves to be in a museum. Out of all my entire collection, I think this is the only item that deserves to be in a collection right now, or uh, a museum right now. Um, yeah, I mean, these things are, I'm so stoked to finally own one. This upper um, on the shoulder pads is similar to the OG 507 material, by the way. I just thought I'd mention that. So, yeah, guys, here it is. I'm super glad I was able to share this with you guys. If you guys have any questions about this thing, just go and let me know. And as always, have a nice day. And thanks again for the four years on YouTube. I really do appreciate it. See you guys on the next video.